Harvey Milk, the first openly gay American politician. Harvey Milk grew up in a small Jewish family in New York with his older brother Robert, his brother Minnie, and his father William. Harvey had a pretty average childhood. He was a second string athlete, a member of the prom committee, and an all around average high school student. He also had a hobby of going to the local theater. He graduated the Bayshore High School in 1947 and then graduated from the State University of New York at Albany. Harvey then went and joined the Navy where he became a lieutenant and he served until he was dishonorably discharged due to his rumored homosexual behavior. Harvey strayed around a bit and eventually fell in love with John Galen McKinley. J Harvey at this point still hadn't actually come out to his family due to the belief that his mother couldn't handle it. A few months passed and Harvey met J and Harvey and John met Tom O'Horgan, the director of Hair and Jesus Christ Superstar, who hired John as his new stage manager and Harvey as his new assistant producer. They did this for four years, and then they broke up. Harvey then met a new guy and moved to San Francisco. They opened up a small camera store and became a big part in their new community, Castro Street. Just to recap, San Francisco at the time was a heavily Irish city, and in parts was very homophobic. Police brutality on gays was a very common theme. Anyways, Harvey became a bit of a leader on the Castro, and decided to run for city supervisor. Sadly, he did so without any endorsements, and frankly, looking like a hippie. But he wasn't deterred. He lost, but he wasn't really done yet. Harvey then promptly cut off his hippie due and started on the path to get more endorsements than last time. He, in the process, got heavily involved in a protest by the San Francisco Market Association on Coors Beer, and in turn got the Castro community heavily involved in it as well, which earned him quite a few endorsements. He then ran again and lost again, but in the election, his strong ally George Moscone became the new mayor of San Francisco. Harvey then ran for a last time. Along the campaign trail, he met a new boyfriend, Jack Lira. Thankfully, Harvey won this election. Harvey at this point is now nationally known, and even received praise from President Carter. Thankfully, all of Harvey's co-supervisors have pretty similar views to one another, pardon Dan White. Dan White was a slightly corrupted politician. He often traded votes, and, and tried to do so with Harvey when he asked Harvey to push for increased supervisor pay which Harvey refused. Dan then decided to vote against everything Harvey pushed, much to Harvey's chagrin. During his term, a state congressman began pushing for Prop 6, a bill that would fire all gay teachers. Harvey made it his goal to stop this, and effectively did so over a televised debate. Sadly, Harvey's story gets darker from here. After his victory, Dan White decided to resign from his spot as supervisor, but then 10 days later decided to ask Moscone for his job back. Moscone said maybe, but to White, this obviously meant no. White then proceeded to break into City Hall a few days later, and requested a meeting with Moscone, in which he shot and killed Moscone with a silenced pistol. White then casually walked over to Harvey's office, and requested a short talk, and proceeded to shoot Milk five times, killing him. Dan White then turned himself in, and was incarcerated for five years on manslaughter, and killed himself upon release. Harvey, after being killed, was given a 40,000 person candlelight vigil outside of City Hall. He also had many foundations created in his name, including the Milk Foundation, which was created by his nephew, Stuart Milk, who continues to spread Harvey's word today.